and in John 14, my peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, do not be afraid. Let us join in our prayer of invitation. Eternal God, whose word is ever new, we give you great thanks for the unknown journey that lies before us. Kindle in us at this time of worship a sense of wonder and excitement for each new day. Build in us an ever-deepening commitment to move boldly forward. Now open our hearts and grant us creative vision and humble generosity as we turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord.
day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for enemies to be made his footstool, because one sacrifice he has made perfect forever, those who are being made holy. Let us stand. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
<laughs> pumpkin pie. Who would like to make Liam a pumpkin pie? What else do you see on here you'd like? What do you like? Maybe some. That's a zucchini. Wonderful. Those are good for you, Courtney. Apples. Apples are good. Okay, here. Andrew? Apples are good. What do you like best? Do you see any potatoes on there? Okay. Uh, uh, well, yes. It's a sweet potato. Yes. It looks like a skin thing with peanut shells on it, and I'm going to have to ask Mrs. Westfall what the heck that thing is. What, what's that thing? It's, it's got a name she doesn't remember. What? Eggplant? Who likes this? What? You like? What is it? Nah, not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Cabbage. Okay. So when we're finished having this for a couple of weeks here, all of these are going to be given to people who are hungry. And apples. Yes. So today, when you go home for lunchtime, give thanks to God for all these wonderful things. God. They're going to stay here for a while. Uh, Courtney should have given it to Liam. That would have been a temptation. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for farmers who've raised their crops for food for our tables. Thank you for everything.
Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed, we may hear the joy of what you say to us today. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verses 7 through 11. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame as at this day falls on us, the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven up because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials, and our ancestors because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants and prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written in the laws of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out upon us, because we have sinned against you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus speaks to us about prayer. And whenever you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not keep up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, in this sanctuary, as we bring our praises and all that we are, may we listen for your word to us, to us as individuals, to us as families, to us as the community of faith gathered, and to us the world that you create. In Jesus' name, amen. A minister who served the church down in Atlanta had planned an evening out with his wife and said he would meet her at the church parking lot. And as they went out to their car together to go out on their evening, they spotted a woman kneeling over her husband who had collapsed. And there he was gasping for breath. The pastor's wife quickly dialed 911, and the pastor knelt over this individual. And the man looked up at him and said, Charlie, forgive me. And the pastor said, I'm not Charlie. And what the pastor didn't know, but found out later, was Charlie was this man's son. They had not spoken for two years, for he had kicked his son out of his house. The man looked up again and reached out but his, and took his hand and said, Charlie, please forgive me. And the pastor again said, just relax, an ambulance is on its way soon. But the man suddenly convulsed in terrible pain, and it was clear that he would not make it to the hospital. And with his last gasping energy, he pulled down the pastor's arm and begged, Charlie, please forgive me. And the pastor said, I do forgive you. I forgive you. And those were the last words that that man heard on this earth. Later, the pastor wondered if he had done the right thing. I am not his son. The relationship with his son was still broken. What right did I have to grant forgiveness? And then it came to him. This is what the Christian faith is about. Now faith, hope, love, abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Before we can forgive others, God sometimes has to humble us. Asking for forgiveness releases the guilt, even if it's not with pure intentions. So God can use guilt constructively. People use guilt destructively. But asking God for forgiveness is like laying down your armor, taking away the protections and the barriers that we have. Matt Laney tells us, what could be truer than this? Forgiveness is hard. And yet, if we don't practice forgiveness over and over, we will miss the point of the whole gospel. Yes, you each join the religion that makes the hardest thing the central thing. Next time you join, read the small print. Forgiveness is tough because no one deserves it. That's why it's called forgiveness, because it's given before it's deserved and sometimes even before it's asked for. 
waiting for someone to be worthy of our forgiveness is like waiting for a frog to become a prince. And we have to forgive the undeserving a lot. A lot. Like every day, or as Jesus said, like seven times, seventy times. Forgiveness is often so challenging, we can only do it by the grace of God, mindful of how much God has forgiven us. Jesus said we should pray to God, forgive us our sins as, as we have forgiven those who sin against us. The order is important. Apparently those who recognize their need for God's forgiveness are then in the best position to forgive others. So if you ever struggle to forgive someone who has wronged you, and we all struggle with that, spend a little more time on your knees seeking God's forgiveness, like every day, like seven times, 70 times. There was an adult membership class of a church that had gathered together, and the pastor had assigned each of them to bring a scripture that applied to their life. Floyd was the first to speak. He had a, a long white beard, wore overalls. His life had been defined by a mental breakdown following his service in Vietnam. He worked as a car mechanic, ate at the local Mexican restaurant, tried to stay on top of life with his antidepressants. Well, he said to the group, I picked Genesis 1, the story of creation. Before I came to this church, I was formless and a void. Darkness was all around me. And then God moved over the waters of my life and said, let there be light. And there was. And there was a long pause, and then it was Linda's turn. She was introduced to the church through the community meals. She could get lit up pretty quickly and had a marvelous reputation for her anger. But she said to the group, I chose Psalm 122. May there be peace within your walls. Because she told the group, that is what I need in my life, peace in my heart. And I never knew that an old book like the Bible could describe exactly what I felt deep inside. And then the pastor spoke. There is one body, there is one spirit, there is one hope in God's call to us. And then each one reaffirmed their baptismal vows to seek and to serve Christ in all people, and to pray for and, in, and to encourage each other in creative ways to be the body of Christ. Since that meeting, Linda moved away, Floyd committed suicide, a consequence of the unrelenting PTSD. It was a community. It was a community before they came. It was a community after they came. No wonder people drive by churches and don't go in. The risks are often greater than what people would perceive to be the benefits. The forming of a community is something very fragile, and it takes a lifetime, and it can disappear in a breath. Because we all need forgiveness. In the message translation we read, In prayer there is a connection between what God does and what we do to others. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. History reveals an interesting story about Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes, the popular mystery series, he decided to pre play a practical joke on 12 of his respected and well-known friends. He sent out 12 telegrams with the same message to each one. Flee at once. All is discovered. And within 24 hours, each of his friends had left the country. <laughs> Each of these men obviously had something to hide. <laughs> Suddenly, though, only in jest, the cover had been pulled away to reveal their true nature. And once they believed that to be revealed, they ran. Such a legacy is not a lifestyle you want to leave behind. So what are you and I trying to hide from God? and especially from God's forgiveness. 
part, part of our faith, our baptism, our discipleship is to witness to lives that are changed. Whether that happens on a mission trip to help out another church in Ottawa, Ohio, or a straightforward message like Eric Taggart's about time and choices with his family, your being a disciple makes a difference to others' lives. William Stafford has written a poem. It's called A Ritual to Read to Each Other. And it has an old image in it of elephants on their way to, uh, on a parade on their way to the circus fields outside of town. Some of us are old enough to remember those. The tail of one held by the trunk of the one behind. And so they would follow each other. He uses that image to describe our need to hold on to each other in the midst of all of the deep darkness and the news that discourages us. If you don't know the kind of person I am, and I don't know the kind of person you are, a pattern that others may, may prevail in the world, and following the wrong God home, we may miss our star. For there is many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break, sending with shouts the horrible errors of childhood, storming out to play through the broken dike. And as elephants parade holding each other's tail, but if one wanders, the circus can't find the part. I call it cruel and maybe the root of all cruelty to know what occurs but not recognize the fact. And so I appeal to a voice to something shadowy, a remote, important region in all who talk. Though we could fool each other, we should consider lest the parade of our mutual life get lost in the dark. For it is important that awake people be awake, or breaking line may discourage the others back to sleep. The signals we give, yes or no or maybe, should be clear. The darkness around us is deep. Jesus Christ is offering something very mysterious to each of us this morning. You can choose to be a more forgiving person when you leave here today. You can choose to let Jesus enter one of those dark rooms in your heart where you need forgiveness. You can ask Jesus to heal you, and you will not be alone. Look at the person next to you, in front of you, behind you. Look at a friend up here in the choir loft. You are not alone in needing forgiveness. You are part of the household of God, and you can choose. You can choose to leave here as part of the forgiven people of God, or not. You can choose not to stay in this warm, affirming, friendly place, and you can choose to go out into a world that needs forgiving people walking around being forgiven, or not. You can grow a little closer to being a Jesus follower, asking for his Holy Spirit to make you gentler each day, kinder with others, looking for people to forgive rather than people to look down on or honk your horn at, as I do, or ignore or complain about others, or not. But this is what God wants. It's what Jesus tried to set in motion. Circle of friends, each holding on to each other, who would learn God's love, go out into God's world and act out that love, Return for sustenance when the darkness fights back at us and seems to overcome us. And then to go out again. Let us pray. In the darkness, Lord, in the darkness of each room in our lives, offer us again your forgiveness. In Jesus' name.
Leonard Nimoy himself, Jewish, himself Jewish, spoke the words based on a traditional Jewish blessing. Peace be with you. May the tithes and offerings enable others to live long and prosper in peace. Our efforts will now come forward.
go and trust. But the desert is bleak, and beyond the horizon is the unknown to me. I will always be with you. Always. Always. There is so much to do. I don't know if I have the strength or the will or the faith. I have claimed you as my own. I have set you apart to complete the task. If you need strength, ask. If you need courage, pray. If you have doubts, believe in my words. Then I will go, and I will declare what I believe, wherever I may be. So be it. I have chosen well. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.